Hello and welcome to this OpenSum Creator Overview video. I'm Adam, a developer on the project. In this video, I'm going to quickly run through some of the high-level features of OpenSum Creator that I think would be useful for you to know before you start building models in it. I'm going to run through things like how to install the software, uh, how to set up your user interface for the type of workflow you'd like to use, and some tips and tricks and things that are, might not be immediately obvious if you started using the software all by yourself. It's best to think of this video as a high-level set of individual clips that uh, should just help you along the way. If you'd like something meatier or more coherent, then I'd recommend watching the tutorial videos. Those videos are designed to be a longer kind of unedited format in which I actually use OpenSum Creator to do something like build a hand model. Okay, so without a delay, let's start. The first thing to cover is how to actually get a copy and install OpenSum Creator. At the moment, what you can do is go to the Computational Biomechanics Lab OpenSum Creator repository, which is the central official repository for OpenSum Creator. And if you go down to the releases bar on the right hand side here, you click here, uh, you'll see that there's a 0.1 uh, public alpha release. On there, uh, there's version, there's binaries of OpenSum Creator that you can download. So in my case, I'm going to download the Win64 executable. And if I download that, let it finish. I'll then just follow a standard install procedure. On a on Mac, it might be slightly different. You might have to drag icons around and, and browse to your um, applications folder, but it's uh, kind of standard on each platform. Once you've got the software installed, you can yeah, just boot it straight away with the stick box here which goes straight in. Uh, and once, once you've got it installed, you can also search for it in your start bar here. So yeah, I could go open sim creator, right, in order to boot the software. Uh, and if you want to do it kind of uh, from the file system, maybe you're trying to create a shortcut or something, uh, at the moment, open sim creator on Windows is installed in the program files, open sim creator, and then the executables in the spin folder here. Let me just close this copy. Like that. So the next point is how the user interface actually kind of works. At the moment, Opsum Creator shows one screen at a time, and you must navigate between those screens using the buttons in the UI or some shortcut key. Later versions of Opsum Creator might support something like a tabbed interface. So uh, from here, we have the splash screen. This is the screen that you're kind of greeted with when you boot the software. And if you open an OSIM file, you'll open the model editor screen. And in this screen, you're editing an OpenSIM kind of file. Uh, if you'd like to know more about this screen in particular, tutorials one and two use the screen extensively to build a pendulum and a black bouncing block. But effectively, this is a screen where you can edit bits of an OpenSIM model. So you can change properties, you can look through the object hierarchy of that model, and you can edit coordinates like this. Uh, from the screen, you can also start a simulation. So if you hit this green button up here, or press Control R, you'll start running a simulation of that model. This is just a standard basic forward dynamic simulation. Uh, and when you hit that button, uh, you'll notice that the screen kind of flashed a little bit until it popped into this simulation screen here. Uh, this is a separate screen. It's just the simulator screen. Uh, it looks a lot like the editor screen. And the way that you tell the difference between the two is that, yeah, if you look at this top bar, this top main menu here, you'll see it switched to editor. That kind of tells you, yeah, you're in a simulator screen right now. So if I switch back to the editor, I'm back here. I can make a little change to the model, whatever I want to change. And then I can launch off another simulation. And, and then I can kind of browse between simulations. The simulator screen isn't particularly comprehensive. It's just there for debugging your model creation process. So you can pull information out of your model as you're running your simulation. Maybe you, you want to see what maybe some outputs are as you as you scroll through time here, if they're in any way interesting. Uh, maybe you want to do some output plots, uh, which I'll explain in a kind of separate point in this video. And maybe you want to like kind of debug what the integrator is up to if you're working on kind of low level simulation. Uh, performance measurements. But overall, the simulator screen is just a way of testing your model as you're building it. If you'd like a more comprehensive simulation experience, I'd recommend the official OpenSim GUI. 
Okay, so that's the splash screen, the editor screen, and the simulator screen. The only remaining screen to talk about is the mesh editor, uh, which is explained comprehensively in tutorials three and four. So to get to the mesh editor, you go to this top main menu here, and then you go down to import meshes and click that. This brings you to another screen, which is called the Mesh Importer. And uh, what this does is it lets you kind of freely set up and model uh, in 3D space without as many constraints as building an open sim model. So what you're doing here is, is that you're editing a 3D scene. You're kind of adding bodies, uh, you're, you know, adding, adding a body. Maybe you want to add a mesh, right? So maybe you add meshes and you add something. It's a tiny finger here. Uh, and then you can connect things to things and so on. And the, the purpose of the mesh importer screen is to kind of get your mesh data into an OpenSim model by working on a simplified 3D scene before you import it. So you set it all up in a 3D scene and you hit convert to OpenSim model. And then you're in the editor screen again. And uh, yeah, hopefully that's a nice overall look at the different screens you're using. Effectively, what it's going to be is that you're going to use the editor screen to edit OSIM files, the simulator screen to take some basic measurements of your model, and the mesh importer screen to set up a new model using mesh files. So the next thing I would recommend setting up is where your panels are positioned. Uh, in OpenSim Creator, you have these movable panels, and uh, they might not be in a great position when you first boot up the software or in a position you like them to be in. Uh, and you can fix that, so you can drag any panel around like this by just clicking on the top bar and moving it like this. Every time you drag a panel, it should show these kind of uh, docking ports here. So you can, for example, I could have this coordinate editor docked on the left-hand side of the screen. I might put my property editor down here over my log, uh, and I might just want to resize this and keep it over the panel like this. So when you first boot up OpenSim Creator, one thing that's pretty good to do is to figure out uh, where you'd like your panels. Um, in the tutorial videos, I always have a standard layout. I always have a hierarchy view and a coordinate editor kind of up here, which closely mirrors how OpenSim GUI works. And then I have the property editor down here. Um, but it might be that you're working on a file and you don't really want as many panels open, so of course you can just close the panels you don't want to use. Uh, and up here in the window, if you can't click the X, you can just close it all down and just have a 3D viewer, for example, if you happen to just be working on editing an OSIM file and you just want a 3D viewer with none of the noise. So yeah, the panel moving feature isn't fully fleshed out in the alpha. Sometimes it's a bit screwy in terms of uh, positioning, but hopefully being able to set up your own workspace will be useful if you're working on something in particular as part of your model building. So the next feature to show is OSIM hot reloading. What this is, is that OpenSim Creator will reload any OSIM file it has loaded in the editor if you make a change to that file. So, for example, if I go up to here and click on Edit and open OSIM in an external editor, it's going to open the, the backing OSIM for this, for this model here in, in my text editor. And if I now like, go to some component in that model inside of the XML, so if I go here and I copy out this name and I find it in a file, I can then edit this model in the OSIM in the pure raw XML and see updates in the UI. So one workflow here would be, for example, to have the visualizer on one side of the screen and uh, the text editor on the other side of the screen, right? And then to make edits here. Now, of course, this isn't quite as convenient as making edits straight inside the UI, right? Because I can obviously go down here and type the scale factor changes in. Uh, but the, the kind of advantage of this technique is that if the UI doesn't support something, uh, but you know that it's supported by the OpenSim API. You can make changes to this file kind of independently of the UI. So for, I'll give it as a concrete example, let's say you want to add a, a point to this path here. Now, adding points to paths is, is not kind of fully supported in OpenSim Creator because it's possible to do that in OpenSim GUI and it was deprioritized for version 0.1. Uh, but let's say you want to do, let's say you want to add that point and you don't want to have to open uh, your file in different software. 
the, the workaround is to lean on top of this hot reloading feature. So you could, for example, uh, go and look up uh, a point on this path, right? So this bi chong b1 might be good, a good candidate. Uh, let's go and get that string here. So if I look at bi chong p1, I see, okay, this is point number one, right? And if I edit it, I can then hopefully see, okay, that's exceeding a tolerance of some sort, so maybe it could be like here. Right, so you can see that I'm making little edits to this point, and it's moving around, that's nice. So let's say I wanted to add an extra point between P1 and P2, what I could do is, in the text editor, I could kind of copy out point 1, and go add a new point called, let's say, PX, right? And give this one a new position, like here. And then now I've got my path with an extra point, right? And I've added a point despite the fact that the UI doesn't directly support doing that. And I can interplay between these two. So for example, I could now go over to PX and change something about that. Like for example, I could go and uh, rename it to PB, right? And then if I hit save here, you can see that because Sublime Text automatically updates too, it's uh, automatically changed that name to PB there. So the advantage of the hot reloading is that uh, it lets you do things that aren't quite supported that well by the UI yet, and it gives you full access to the full feature set of OpenSim in terms of what components you can add and, and what you can do, but it requires uh, that you have to write some XML to get the job done. So you'll see me use a hot reloading feature as a great way of working around some of the shortfalls in the UI. So the next thing I'd like to show you is the output plotting feature of OpenSim Creator. And to do that, I'm going to open the toy landing model. Uh, what this feature is, is it's something that lets you plot any output from the model. Uh, OpenSim itself natively supports emitting output values during a simulation. And uh, what this means is that if you uh, right click something in the model, you can see that there's a request outputs here. If you go to that, it's going to list every output that that component can produce, and every output of a component's parent. So for example, I've right-clicked a muscle here, and I can request its fiber force. And I've right-clicked the chest here, which is some mesh geometry. The mesh is part of a model, and it's connected to a body, so you can see that I can request the torso body's angular acceleration magnitude, for example. And now that these things are requested, if I hit simulate, and I open the Outputs tab. Uh, you, you may, for example, uh, need to uh, go to, up to Window here and toggle it on, right? There's an Outputs thing here. You can see that these outputs are now being plotted while the simulation runs. So you can see that the fiber force is going down, 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 and it seems to spike up around here when the foot just hits the ground. And you can see that the angular acceleration of this body really jerks upwards here, and that's probably, again, because of this, uh, maybe the ground strike or some reaction from, from the lower parts of the body. Uh, another thing to note about this output plotting feature is that you don't need to do it before running the simulation. Uh, you can go back to the editor, and I can, for example, uh, right-click here and request uh, the model's kinetic energy. And if I switch to the simulator and go to the outputs tab again, you can see that now it's plotting the kinetic energy. Uh, so you can see how the kinetic energy goes up as it's dropping, and then it suddenly goes down as it hits the ground, but because it bounces off the floor, it goes up again a little bit until around here, which is yeah when probably the, the other foot hits the ground too. Something else that's quite handy to know about the output plotter is that uh, yeah, you can save all this data to a CSV file, uh, or you can save and open it in your default CSV program. For me, that's Excel, so that if I open this, uh, if I save it to my desktop, let's say, as uh, data, uh, save that, and I open it, it's now going to open in Excel, and then, yeah, I could, for example, like, make a little plot of that data if I needed to. So, uh, yeah, but what this feature is helpful for is if you're uh, making a model and you just need to make some basic measurements to get an idea of whether you've tweaked your parameters correctly, uh, it's not as comprehensive as the plotting feature in OpenSim GUI, so if, you, if you're looking to do like a comprehensive analysis or comparison, we would still recommend you use the official OpenSim GUI, but this output plotting feature is really useful if you're making a model. And yeah, that's plotting outputs. Uh, I hope it's useful.
So that's about all for this overview video. I just wanted to put, quickly point out some interesting tips and tricks about the software. If you'd like more information, uh, there's inbuilt documentation in OpenSum Creator. You can click here to open it in a separate browser window. Uh, if you find any issues with the software or you'd like to help contribute to the project, if you go to About here, you can. there's a shortcut to open some Creator GitHub. If you click that, it'll open in a browser. Alternatively, you can copy the link, which I'll paste in the video description. And yeah, I really hope that uh, you guys enjoy using the software, and uh, I look forward to hearing your feedback about the features that are shown in this video. Thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.